Okay. The glaze I'm going to use, it's uh, a black glaze that was custom made to match uh, a glaze I had been using a while ago and uh, getting back to my earlier conversation, an earlier segment, talking about um, how important it is to uh, use all the same stains and sealers and glazes and top coats from all the one manufacturer and to make sure to look at the data sheets. Uh, the technical data sheets to verify that they're all compatible with each other. Um, this was a glaze I had to have formulated as well uh, to make sure that it was compatible with the current system I'm using. Now um, the manufacturer get the glaze from they have a lot of stores across the world or at least across the country anyways um, but there are specific stores, uh, the chemical coating stores, that deal with more of the um, custom shop or small manufacturer and formulating custom stains and glazes and top coats for them. And um, this one here, you can see this, but it's actually thick. It's kind of like a, a gel stain almost. It's a little bit thinner than that. But the previous black glaze I had used, uh, they had used this here. and. Um, it uh, definitely um, was a little on the thick side. But what I liked about it is it kind of hung up in the corners really well. Uh, I've never actually tried spraying it. It probably would spray if I had enough uh, fluid pressure behind it. But I always use a, a cheap brush. And then I also use these uh, cheap uh, artist brushes to kind of do the detail in the corners. And I'll show you that as we get to it. So I'm just making sure this glaze is mixed up nicely and uh, that looks good. So we'll get some PPP or PPE on, although you can see I got some already in my hands, but uh, get some gloves on, get some rags here, and we're gonna start glazing the drawer front. We'll start with the back first. Okay, this is just a cheap all-purpose, uh, looks like it could be possibly a china bristle. Not exactly sure. It's about a $5 brush. And I'm going to use this brush to uh, basically lay on the glaze front and back. I'm going to do the back first, let it sit just a little bit, and then wipe it off. Now, those of you that are not familiar with glazing, glazing is nothing more than putting a, a stain of some sort over the seal coat, between the seal coat and top coat. And uh, it just gives it a different effect. In this case, it kind of enriches the color a little bit, and um, also at the same time, you'll see some black glaze hanging. It kind of gives it an antique effect. Um, very popular on stains, but it's also extremely popular over paints. Uh, just gives it that old antique look. Now before I glaze it, I'm going to uh, blow the parts off with compressed air, uh, just because I don't want any of this crap trapped beneath it. Uh, it's just a good practice. There's arguments, you know, always been out there, well, you don't need to do that because you're going to be wiping the glaze off, and that's fine, great, and dandy, but it all depends. I believe it all depends on how much your seal coat powders out. If your seal coat doesn't really turn white like this, you probably wouldn't have to, but I always do it as a good practice to just to eliminate any dust that might want to pop up in the, in the top coat. Now for the glazing. Really nothing special. Let's take the brush, dip it in a little bit of glaze, and you're essentially just kind of painting it on a little bit. And all I'm doing is just covering the surface in a nice thin film. And I could rag this on too, which I might actually do because this brush isn't working that great. But I'll definitely use a brush in the, uh, on the front to get into the corners. But I just might use a rag. Just seeing how well this works. It seems to be working okay. I definitely wouldn't want to do a lot like this. I'm just going to take a rag now and just wipe off the excess. And you can see how much the color has actually changed already. So 
deepened a little bit. Now for the moment of truth. It's pretty close. It's missing a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the uh, black, but that'll get highlighted as you can see here. There's a difference from here to here. So it should be pretty close. It's definitely not bad. Uh, the one thing is, is that uh, anytime you match something that's got age to it, you typically run into more of an overall age of the wood and what might have been multicolored at one time might actually be more consistent in color. Um, this is what I had them match to and it looks like I need to get a little bit more color on the front but again once I put top coat over this that will bring out some of that black and make this a little bit darker. Okay, I'm going to use the brush to get into the corners here first. Using the same technique, just basically dabbing the brush in the glaze. I'm just trying to work the glaze into the corners. Okay. I'll take a regular glaze rag. I'm just basically smearing it around, getting the entire surface covered in glaze. Now I want to take a moment to show you here now just exactly what the color difference is going to be. I'm going to take this rag here, I'm going to wipe it off. You can already see that we got a little bit of a, a cast to it, and that's essentially what we're after. It deepens it a little bit, but at the same time when I top coat that, it'll bring out more of the black. Now I can let the glaze sit on here a little bit and maybe think it'll or help it allow it to basically darken a little bit. The thing is, anytime you use a, a glaze stain or a wipe stain over a seal coat, it's only going to get so dark. And that's because it can't really penetrate because of the seal coat. If you were staining raw wood, obviously, the longer you let it sit, the darker it can get. But being that we're finishing over a controlled sealed surface, it's not going to get too dark. Um, there are other methods you could do. Let me see if I can do it here. Um, you can actually take your brush and you can do what they call dry brushing which I might have to do on this on the uh, front of the door here just to get more of a, a uniform look. The only problems with dry brushing is if you don't execute it properly you can have brush marks that looks like it was brushed and that's not that's not what I'm after here. Now there are some finishes that you know if you brush it like this give it that dirty uneven look. Some customers like that, but unfortunately I need to match what's already there that I did once before. Okay, now I'm just using the brush and working it into the corners. Okay, now when I wipe the glaze off here in the flat panel, I want to leave some in the corners, but I know that I'm going to end up wiping it out anyways, so I'm going to have to come back with a small artist brush, as I explained earlier, and uh, kind of uh, detail some of the missing glaze in the accent corners again.
There we have it.